This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by Freekeen.com. If there's a simultaneous violent movement, it basically calls forth the government's ability to like justify all kinds of horrible repression, and nobody wants to be part of that, right? So Makes you sense. end up um, having these radical flanks that are really undermining um, the, the odds of success. At the same time, nonviolent movements can succeed um, despite uh, the presence of violent movements. We've seen that in the Philippines. We saw it in Iran. We've um, you know, seen it in Egypt and, and elsewhere. So I, I think that it's, um, it's still a possibility, but that they don't help and they could hurt. That's kind of the bottom line. So, I mean, you know, even the right will still use the Black Panthers as this sort of scare tactic, what, 30 or 40 years later after they've essentially gone away. So, I mean, I think that that's true, that the, they, they can vilify. The people don't want to be vilified. Uh, they don't want to be paint, painted as uh, dangerous. And um, you But know, who I, does history me- remember, right? I mean, you look back, yeah. who were those violent people associated with Gandhi? I don't know. Who were the violent people associated with Martin? I just Luther named them. <laughs> I'm sorry, with Gandhi? With with Martin Luther King. I could look it up with Gandhi. I, I don't know what their names um, names are, but I'm sure you could find. It. I don't know. The, yeah. History tends to remember whoever's successful. I, I would say is is the case. Will rise up. Live out the true meaning of its creed. Um, there, there's a couple of other sort of uh, you know questions here. What we've seen, it seems, in recent history is that uh, sort of urban warfare, urban terroristic guerrilla warfare, is more successful against governments um, in I, I e Iraq, I e um, I don't know if Afghanistan. Afghanistan's really not a particularly good example of this, but um, you know there have been uh, some. Some reasonably good examples of of urban guerrilla warfare where they've they've staved off a much larger attacker. What do you say to people that say, "Oh, well, you just got to fight the government in the streets"? Yeah, actually, the the example a lot of people bring up is Algeria. France throws the bulk of its military manpower into the Algerian rebellion. Um, the Algeria independence. Um, movement that kicked France out, basically. Okay. And, uh, you know, usually what I would say to that is is a couple of things. First of all, um, we do see that when, um, when there's an occupation by a democratic country, um, those tend to not go well uh, for the democratic country. Uh, usually the indigenous population throws them out, whether they do that by nonviolent means or violent ones. Gotcha. So I think that you're going to have a much higher rate of success for violent insurgencies when they're facing democracies that are occupying their country from a foreign place. Um, but in general, um, uh, what I haven't seen is a compelling argument that where these violent insurgencies have worked, that nonviolent in- insurrections couldn't have worked. What I mean by that is um, I don't see compelling evidence to show that the violence was necessary to achieve that outcome. So, right? so you, let, let's say that uh, in a hypothetical that the Algerian independence movement had been um, completely nonviolent. We, we may have seen the exact same outcome. It's being called in Why Civil Resistance Works, book by Erica Chenoweth and Maria Stefan. Uh, we actually have Erica with us here. We're going to continue that uh, interview in a moment. If you've got a question for her, 800-259-9231 is the number. You can also visit us online at freetalklive.com. When we left uh, Erica during that last break, we're about ready to get a discount code from her to order this book. Now, regular price, if you were to go to Amazon, for instance, uh, through our Amazon link at shop.freetalklive.com, you'd get it for about 30 bucks, uh, 29 bucks or something like that. But uh, on your and it website, looks like a twenty nine dollar book to me. I mean, this is the kind of hardcover. Yeah, that's that's what you pay in a, in a in a store. I mean, the pages are nice, and I'm holding it in my hand here, and and I'm I love the know. logo too. By the way, with the yeah. fist with a awesome peace looking. sign. It's a fist with a peace <laughs> sign. It's great stuff. Can we borrow that, Erica? The, uh, logo? <laughs> you can talk to the publisher about that. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, so give us a discount code. Give us instructions on how our listeners can get uh, a price break. Sure. If they just go to. Um Columbia University Press's website and look for why civil resistance works. Um, they, all they need to do is enter the discount code W H Y C H at checkout and they'll get a thirty percent discount. W H Y C H at the checkout. Right. And, right. 
Now and you can, can just go to, to you can just go to cup dot columbia dot edu and you're right on the front page. We've uh, we've already checked this out t- this evening, so uh, people can just go there um, and and buy the the book and you get a thirty percent discount. Uh, Not with, too shabby with coupon code W. W H Y C H. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to read that upside right. down. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. Now, uh, one more one more question I have for you, Erica. You know, some people will claim that you know, in this new world, and you've sort of answered this previously, but I think it bears uh, repeating on this particular one. In this new world, all you have to do to have your uh, your little uh, insurrection work is to get a few teenagers to wrap themselves in dynamite and uh, to run off towards the in- the infidel or whatever, and then. That works because, you know, suicide campaigns work. What do you have to say to that? You know, um, I haven't seen very much compelling evidence to show that they work uh, to achieve the ultimate outcomes that they want. They definitely work to get a lot of attention. They work to scare a lot of people. Um, They may work to change how people uh, view the other side and, and things like that. But they aren't very good at developing constructive solutions to problems. Um, and I think, you know, the thing about um, civil resistance is that um, I think it's cut short before it can really play out and work a lot of the time because people are either impatient or they can't get enough people on board with their idea mm-hmm. uh, to, to see that it's going to work. And, and um, so the, the, I think what, what I'm hoping for is to sort of change the conventional wisdom about what types of things that ordinary civilians can do to change conditions that are intolerable for them. And the, the main point we're trying to make here is that teenagers or whomever, they do not have to strap dynamite on themselves and run into, you know, the opposite side and blow themselves up, that this is a very powerful force for change in the world. It's becoming more powerful as a force for change and is probably, you know, um, eventually going to be uh, the most important force for change in the world. And so um, they just don't need to do that. And I'm hoping to, to really change the conventional wisdom about that. What kind of what kind of uh, advice do you have for people that might uh, be considering using some kind of civil resistance to get some kind of change that they want, uh, in, you know, someplace? Well, you know, there, there are a lot of resources available uh, to activists and, and other and, and, you know, ordinary citizens. The Internet, as you said, has made a lot of that accessible to people. And uh, there are a few um, places I'd recommend in particular. Um, the Albert Einstein Institution is, um, is a small uh, organization where Gene Sharp, who's kind of the main theoretician of the use of nonviolent direct action works, he's got a number of pamphlets um, available for free download um, that are very useful. Um, the International Center on Nonviolent Conflict is, a, is a, um, an organization in Washington whose sole purpose is to promote knowledge about nonviolent conflict, and they have a number of resources as well and events. Um, So, you know, I'd I'd start there and then, um, you know, just using simple Google searches, um, one can find uh, quite a lot of information about how to plan um, and and, um, develop uh, a strategy that works. This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com believes Keen is the best destination for pro-liberty activists like you. Keen is an exciting and challenging ground floor opportunity. Visit move.freekeen.com and read over 108 reasons to move to Keen. Help us free the beautiful little city of Keen from the clutches of the government. Learn why you should move to Keene at move.freekeen.com. 